What's up guys, Axis here and today I'm going to be doing a tutorial on drop shadow icons and you'll see these in a lot of apps today, uh, a lot of developers are using this kind of style because it does stand out and it's just a really nice effect and there's a lot of uh, different variations you can do with them. Uh, and this is kind of based off material design um, which is uh, something that Google as far as I know came up with and they have incorporated it into basically all of their web apps and their operating system Android Lollipop. So if you want to get some inspiration for some of the stuff you can do with this uh, then go to materialup.com because uh, they've just got some really nice stuff there. But basically why I was doing these kind of icons was because I was doing it for a friend's website. Well I mean we're kind of we're kind of all doing the website but as you can see we've got some really simple icons here. I'm probably going to try and do one more complicated today, uh, but you know these are obviously minimalistic ones, we've even got one on the mock-up here that I did, um, and yeah, so we're just doing web design and stuff, um, so that'll be up soon, that'll be finished soon I mean, uh, and then I've obviously put this into a little Behance project, so we've got a bunch of icons here that I made, some for hosting, uh, for graphics cards kind of thing for like performance or like octane you could do this for this little cogwheel it could be settings or it could be uh, aptana studio which is what my friend uses to do the html uh, and all that good stuff for the page and then we've got quote for you know get a quote oh, very clever isn't it <laughs> uh, and then we've got photoshop uh, it's just a font i think it's roboto um something italic and then we've got Facebook, we've got some different uh, social icons, and then we've also done it for the logo. As you can see, we've got it in the tab as well. Uh, well, I haven't done a drop shadow on a tab because it's quite a low resolution. But yeah, that's basically all the stuff that I did for it. Uh, and I've still, I'm still going to do some stuff for it, obviously. I've still got some stuff to do. But in here, we've got Google's palette for uh, some good mature design stuff. So, um... We've got some really vibrant colours and what the kind of idea is, is that you have, uh, for example up here you've got this teal uh, colour header with these um, kind of, what do you call them, breadcrumbs up here with uh, just one colour like white or black. Um, so yes, yeah, so you just have a vibrant colour behind something that's, you know, just a simple colour in front of it, like white or black. So what you just do is you'll just pick a random colour, so I'm going to go purple. Um, and then we're going to go into uh, to Photoshop and I'm going to create an icon 128 by 128, you can obviously go bigger than this, I'm going to do a resolution at 300 uh, dpi and then I'm going to do 8 bit because I don't really need 32 bit colour for this because there's only a few colours um, so yeah, there's not really that much depth and I'm going transparent because obviously I'm going to want to save this out and put it into a website so first off you're just going to be presented with this really low res uh, box here and it's going to be quite hard to you know look at stuff in high res unless you zoom out but we're just going to zoom in at, at the start and then what we're going to do is we're going to get the elliptical marquee tool uh, if you don't already have this and just drag this out it'll probably be on the original rectangle marquee tool we'll just put it to elliptical and then we're going to hold shift and drag this out here which will create a perfect sphere and then I'm just going to kind of reposition this and then I'm going to do Alt Delete with whatever color I've got, but I'm just going to create the color here. So I'm going to do Control V to paste this into the hex uh, box. And then I'm going to do Alt Delete, and then we've got our color. And then if we click Control A with the selection tool uh, selected, we can go ahead and do um, align horizontally and vertically. And then we're going to do Control D to deselect that. So now we've got our base color, what we can do is start doing whatever icon we want. So I'm just going to get a rounded rectangle tool for he from here. Uh, so if you don't already have this, and again, drag out and then change this from the rectangle to the rounded rectangle. And then we're just going to create a new layer just in case. And I'm going to switch this to the other color. And what I've got here is not a complete white. I've got an F5, F5, F5 white. Um, which, you know, it's just, you know, to change it up from just having a normal white. And it looks a lot nicer in my opinion than just having straight white. Or you can have uh, a darker colour if you want. But I wouldn't recommend having un like a another colour on top of it. I just have uh, a, bl a black or a white kind of thing. So we're just going to create this. This is going to be kind of like a server uh, based thing. And then I'm just going to reposition this to the centre. 
and then I'm going to grab the marquee tool again and I'm going to get my purple again I'm just going to create a new layer and then I'm going to make this kind of IO for the 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 server uh, and then what we're going to do is we're going to just reposition this with the arrows and try and center it or you can center it up here but you know it's not too difficult to center this and then what we're going to do is we're going to select both of these right click and convert to smart object and then we've got our first server rack we can duplicate this and then we can bring this up here if this is not going straight up what you're going to need to do is hold shift while you're dragging it up so just get the spacing correct or how you want it and I'm going to select the uh, these two icons I'm going to do control E to merge both of them and I'm going to do control A and then we're going to center this so we can start scaling this down so if you uh, do control T for the transform uh, you're going to see that we have both of these in one layer now so if we do shift and alt and then we can drag down one of these corners it's going to evenly uh, evenly mm, evenly uh, kind of shrink this down to the right size uh, I don't know if this looks centered. There we go. So just make sure it's all centered because you don't want to create like a drop shadow and then for it to mess up like that. So as you can see, this is looking all right, but you know it's it's nothing special. I might even scale this down a bit more. In fact, that's fine. And now we're going to create the drop shadow. So if we duplicate this and then we go double click, color overlay, and then we're going to change it from red, which is the default, to black. And then we're going to go down on the arrow and then across on the arrow is for kind of a shadow going off to the bottom right if you wanted a shadow going up to the top right you know you just kind of do the same thing but opposite and vice versa for every other side um, and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to uh, re uh, repeat this process until we've got this going off the edge of the screen uh, which can be really tedious and I know there's an easier way of doing this if you have uh, illustrator but I don't have illustrator and I don't know how to do it really so uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep duplicating this or if you have a mouse with macros what you can do is you can go into your software if it has it so if you have a Razer mouse or a Logitech mouse then you probably have this kind of software here Razer is Synapse for Logitech is gaming software Mad Cats will probably have one as well um, and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to create a macro here so uh, in my shift buttons I've got this one called dupes and I'm just going to edit it so I can show you what it does it's a multi key one uh, so it'll just be called a macro probably on the Razer software or something like that and then we've got control and I've got J for the duplicate and then we've got down uh, and then we've got right and this is for the shadow that's going off to the bottom right and then another thing we've added here is repeat options which is while pressed so once you're pressing this it's just going to keep repeating itself until you you know stop pressing the button and the command command will stop looping so now that I've got that what I can do is I can just do this you're not going to see anything up here at first because uh, it will take a while there we go so just do it until it's off the screen and I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to do shift and then click on the bottom one and then we're going to merge all these shadow layers so as you see I can show and hide this uh, and then what I'm going to want to do is I'm going to make this as a overlay of the base layer so if we do alt hold alt and then put this over the base layer click and now you see we've masked out the rest uh, of that overhanging shadow so uh, it's kind of a bit strong so I'm going to put this onto 35 and another thing we can do is uh, we can actually grab this lasso tool which is just like a mask tool in After Effects uh, but it's normally in Photoshop it's set to lasso tool I don't really like using lasso tool uh, so I just use the polygon lasso tool because you know you can get more of an exact cut so I'm going to go from here but no wait not first I'm going to duplicate this one and then I'm just going to do all again and then make this over the top of the other one and then I'm just going to do that again and I'm going to kind of split this up so if I delete this part you can see uh, I might move this down a bit Oops. make sure you've got this part selected if you want to kind of move this about with the arrow keys so as you can see we've kind of got uh, a shadow that's going off to the 
the more of the right and then we've got a shadow going down here so this will kind of create the effect that we've got like um, maybe some sunlight coming in here and then we've got a softer light here or a more uh, or a less intense light shining onto this object so if we scroll out this looks really nice and it's quite effective because it kind of brings out the logo more or whatever icon you've got another thing we can do is we can go into our layer styles and then we can go into bevel and emboss and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do chisel hard for the technique and then I'm going to bring down the size. You can use the scroll wheel if you click on it. And then you can just use the scroll wheel here. And then I'm just going to bring down the depth. Until it's uh, nice and subtle. And then I'll soften this. You can use the soften. And I might bring up the size a bit. So as you can see this is a really subtle effect. But it's really nice and it brings out the logo. Uh, but I think I'm just going to add one more thing here, is I'm going to do uh, Control shift n to create a new layer if you didn't already know, or you can click down here. Uh, press Enter, and then what we're going to want to do is we're going to grab the lasso tool once again, and then we're going to mask this out diagonally. We're going to create kind of a glaze effect over the, uh, the uh, logo, or the icon. And then I'm just going to get my white, Alt delete it, and then I'm going to get my eraser. Make sure you right click here. Uh, and then set your hardness to zero, so you ha get like a nice fade when you start uh, erase erasing part of this. And then what I'm going to want to do is I'm just going to erase some of this at the side. So it doesn't overlap it, and also we have a nice fade into the middle. And then I'm just going to get my drop shadow, and I'm going to bring down the opacity. You can mess about with the, uh, the, with the different parameters until you get something you like, but you know. It's really just personal preference for what you want here. I'm just gonna bring this down. And there we have it. That's pretty much all you really need to do for this kind of thing. You could even just erase part of this more. But yeah, that looks really nice. Uh, so a lot of developers are using this for like different uh, games and stuff like that. You'll see it a lot now. Uh, so obviously there's a really nice technique you can use and you can use it for, uh, you know, you can make like a pack for iOS or like um, Android or something like that. And you know you can sell these if you make enough of them and you make it nice and professional. Uh, so yeah, there's there's just a lot to do with this and it's um, really customizable. So uh, if you enjoyed this, leave a like and also give me some feedback, obviously. Should I do more of this stuff? Am I doing something wrong? Um, you know. So thanks for watching and... I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.